I just want to say it's it's a great honor for, to represent this team at the at the microphone today. This this corner of this project represents a, a lot of hard work that these individuals will talk about today, and and some great partnerships between between all of us. So um, I'm going to introduce Mayor Barry here in a moment. I just wanted to say, as of last week, your mayor is out driving these projects with me. We we drove the entire art corridor, which we both do daily, but we did it together. We, uh, we go out to 118th Street where we see a great new baseball facility going on. We come through the Bosque where we see a great Bosque trail that's wrapping up completion of it with bridges for ADA accessibility all the way from Montano to Central. We get onto the art project through here. We see all the private development that's occurring. We go out to the airport where we see a new center of excellence and, uh, and, a, and a new uh, terminal improvements going on. It's just an exciting time to be in the city of Albuquerque. Mayor Berry is the le one leading all these efforts and we, we truly appreciate as staff working for such a great mayor. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mayor Berry to speak first. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Yeah, come on up. Let's get some of the folks that actually do the work around here. <laughs> Mike, thanks so much, and I appreciate everybody being here today. And, and yet, yeah, Mike was right. We uh, we spent a day yesterday or last week driving the uh, the ART line. Uh, more importantly, I spent part of the day yesterday with my wife driving the ART line, and uh, I try to get on the line every day if I can, and uh, try to stop and talk to businesses and just just tell them how much we appreciate hanging in there with us while we do this catalytic project for our community. I love being in my university. I love my Lobos. Uh, Marie and I are both alumni from Anderson School, and I just, anything we can do uh, on campus or around this great institution, this flagship university for our state is a thrill for me. So Mr. President, thank you for hosting us uh, today. I know we're going to hear from you in just a minute. I also want to thank the contractors, the people from Bradbury and Stam, the folks from the landscape company for being here. We had a meeting last week with a contractor. And I asked him how many people are making a good paycheck this week on this line. And the short answer was about 350 people if you drove this line today are out there uh, making a good living, sleeping in their own bed, in their own town, uh, getting a chance as contract employees uh, to, to go to their kids' little league games and their recitals. Uh, we come from the contracting business as a family, and I know what it's like for these folks when they have to work out of town. So it's nice to have uh, a great project in town. The, um, you know, when it, we also met last week with the students from uh, uh, the student, uh, the student government folks from the from the university, and we were talking about uh, their leadership from ASU and M, and they came into my office, and we were just talking about all things university, and I was trying to speak to them on a peer-to-peer -peer basis as an elected official, their elected officials for their university and art came up and one of the first questions they had was uh, we love public transit are we going to be able to ride the art line as students at no cost to us and we checked with our, our staff and the answer is yes they will uh, they will be able to ride the art line the other thing we're doing with the students that i was happy to coordinate and, and, and communicate to them is that we're talking to businesses up and down and one of the things we're going to do with art is try to work out a way to have some of the buses on certain evenings run later into the evening so our students can get to Knob Hill, they can get to Uptown, they can get to Downtown, and people in our community can get to the university area later in the evening so you can have dinner, get down to these areas, go out and, and uh, meet with your college friends and get back to the campus by the end of the day. So I want to thank Bruce Rosieri and his team uh, for really working hard on that. Um, so we've got um, we got a lot going on uh, with the project, certainly, and today is just a nice symbol of, of what we're doing. I think we're planning a bright future for our community, for transit in our city. Uh, I think the university in general is going to be a great uh, beneficiary of uh, ART. They were kind enough to uh, allow us to do this deceleration lane over here and this turning lane uh, on Central to help with traffic flow. And in return, we were able to do some of the uh, landscaping on the side. And then today we're going to plant what is in essence the first tree uh, along the ART line. There'll be hundreds more to come, uh, but I think it's just a fitting symbol of uh, our collaboration and our partnership with the university. Um, 
of New Mexico. You know, the canopies, when they go over the stations, and the, the first station you'll see uh, is going to be up the street on Cornell here, these will have lights on them, LED lights, and those lights will be able to change color. And I just look forward as a, as a Lobo alumni to see those things glow in red on Lobo Day and uh, right near the university. And then your next bus rapid transit line that Mr. Cog is planning is going to go right up and down University Boulevard. It'll take several years to get that done, but it'll go from the airport all the way to the Health Sciences Center. And uh, there will be another Lobo station here at this corner uh, years down the road when they get that finally done. So uh, today is just another reason uh, to get together and celebrate. I want to thank Mike Reard, my COO, who's been on the front end of this thing all along. We'll have many more press conferences on this project uh, before it is finished, but Mike, he's done a great job. He's my point on this project. He's the guy I talk to almost every day about what's happening uh, on the project. So Mike, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Bruce Rosieri, my Director of Transit, also on the point of this project along with Dana Crawford. Uh, Dana's been leading our public outreach efforts. She just won a national award actually uh, for public outreach for these kinds of projects. Tyler Nunn and Stacy Thompson from Bradbury and Stamp, thank you so much for your work. Uh, DPS, our uh, landscape architect, Will Gleason is here. And from HDR, Ed uh, Potoff is here. Where's Ed? He's right here. So people don't realize that uh, to get to this point in ART before we even put a shovel in the ground, we spent $15 million uh, designing it. We have another $7 million of project oversight uh, to make sure that this project is on schedule, which it is as we stand here today. And then of course, I want to thank uh, President Abdallah uh, Chowki uh, and the UNM and their leadership for working with us on this project. Uh, they've been a great partner with us on many, many areas, and uh, we just want to thank them as well. Sorry. All right. So I think I think that's my my, my time to talk. Uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> that's my signal for my staff. Get off. Uh, I want to bring up Acting President Chowki Abdallah. Uh, to tell you a little bit about the history of this corner we're standing on, which even as a, a UNM alumni, I wasn't aware of uh, before we came here to plant this tree today. So uh, I want to thank the president for his leadership and his vision for our great institution that we're so proud of. Uh, Chalky, great to see you today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, all. You're standing on tight grove in here. And uh, uh, despite what you might think, it's named after William George Tite. He was our third president, the University of New Mexico third president. Uh, in 1901 is when he assumed the presidency and he served for eight years actually, which is uh, an eternity by uh, our standards these days. Uh, and, and President Tite, actually this, this area in here, this was, uh, if you look at the pictures from that time, there was nothing around this except this building behind you. This is the original building of the university. This is Hodgen Hall which is now our alumni uh, building. But uh, he wanted to create a Pueblo on the Mesa. So he wanted to create a campus with, with a specific or with a special architectural style that's unique to New Mexico. And he thought he, does, he didn't want to copy what was done on the East Coast or elsewhere. So he really, he really made it so that our, our campus, which is, which is today very unique among other universities, he's the one who, who put uh, together the plan and, and the criteria for what we have. Uh, and he did a great deal to change the, la the landscape. So he had trees transplanted from the Rio Grande, from the Sandias, and from the Yucas brought, uh, and Yucas brought from, from Silver City. Uh, the two groves of trees planted to the north and the east of the main building, which is now Hodgen Hall, and 30 evergreen trees planted to the west of the building, which is the start of Tide Grove. Some of the trees are still alive and thriving today, and hopefully the new trees will last another 150 years or more. We have, uh, we have a book, if you haven't had a chance to pick it up, uh, check it out, it's a, great, it's a great book that's published by UNM Press, it's called Miracle on the Mesa. And it states that with tights, with President Tights' enthusiasm and boundless energy and a lot of unpaid student labor, some things never change, <laughs> the once wild and barren Mesa did indeed become a blooming oasis. And by the time President Tights stepped down in 1909, the campus had been transformed on this hillside 40 ponderosa pine trees that were 18 feet high. UNM has continued that legacy and is now recognized as a national campus arboretum with more than 5,000 trees on this campus. Its landscaping does create the oasis in the desert and a place for our students and for our faculty, but also for the community to enjoy. 
So Tight Grove is a testament to the vision of one president and his belief that this place would grow to become the nationally recognized university that it is today. And today, in uh, collaboration with the city and with all of you, we hope that also this vision of uh, Tight Grove and of the beautification of this part of campus will also last for many more years to come. Thank you again for all of your partnerships, everyone who's standing behind me, a lot of people who are probably working elsewhere and, and everyone in here. Thank you so much. So a few, a few other two members to come up and talk. Uh, without this project, or without Dana Crawford, this project would not be a reality. She's gone through how many dozens of shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Walking up and down this corridor to make sure every business has as much opportunity to be successful both during the project and when the project is complete as, as possible. So this project is her third child. Yes. And, uh, and, and she truly is a great representative for the city of Albuquerque to the businesses and this project. So with uh, further ado, Dana Crawford. This, this is an exciting day for the project. I can't tell you uh, the, the significance of planting this tree. This is the first tree of over 4,000 shrubs and over 400 different kinds of trees that will be planted along the corridor. I want to tell you exactly what the trees are. Uh, frontier elm, honey locust, urbanite ash, desert willow, and New Mexico olive. It's gonna be spectacular. You're gonna see sidewalks. 97% of the sidewalks are gonna be over six feet or, or wider, as well as um, we're adding lighting, pedestrian level lighting, so that it'll be, feel much safer out there. It's gonna be, you're gonna know that you're in your, your city's front yard, your front, your front doorstep, as the mayor often likes to say, but we're excited to be here. Uh, and just a, um, a huge milestone for us, and we really appreciate all the support we've had in the community, ongoing, regularly, and thank you all for being here this morning. So to get to this point, as the mayor said, we were about $15 million investment into the engineering and the landscape design. That was both Ed and, and Will Gleason leading those efforts from HDR and Decker Parrish. But uh, for the last couple of years, we've had as our, our partner, Bradbury Stam, one of the great local construction firms that we have in town doing many great projects. And uh, at the head of that, Cynthia is here. Cynthia Schultz, thank you. Um, we have, uh, but to represent them today and talk about the project and how the construction's going, is uh, Tyler Nunn. He's not usually dressed this well, but he is a truly a contractor at heart. And uh, when we meet weekly, uh, well, they meet daily, but but weekly when I join them, uh, Tyler is has been a great representative for Bradbury Stand, making sure that this project is staying on time and uh, really really focused on the again the adjacent businesses and making sure that we're constructing this in the safest manner possible, but at the same time representing our community and our businesses. So, Tyler, thank you. Come on up and talk about the project if you could. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Michael said, I'm the representative for Bradbury Stam. Um, very honored to have that uh, that role in this because uh, I'm the representative of Bradbury Stam and all the fabulous subcontractors that we have on this job. Uh, we have the best people in the business. Uh, we're very fortunate they were all local companies and the work that they do, you can see it on a daily basis. They, they, they work hard, they do what they're supposed to do and I couldn't be prouder to be a member of this team. Uh, I want to say thank you to uh, the engineering and design firms HDR and DPS, they've been great to work with. It's been a, a tough schedule, tough project, but uh, they're answering every single question that we have. And then uh, Mayor Barry and his team with Mike Reardon, Dana Crawford, Bruce Rosario have been fantastic in this. So uh, we're very, very pleased and very happy to be as part of this project and, uh, and looking forward to, to progressing through the, the schedule that we have going now. Uh, a little bit about the stuff that we're doing here. Um, we're planting uh, eight new ponderosa pines, as you see around you. Uh, to kind of film this area over here. We're also planting, uh, once we take a little tour when we're done, over 200 shrubs down on this uh, bi-level retaining wall. And part of the design was to, as they talked about before, put the D-cell lane, uh, right turn lane in over there. And it just didn't make sense to have it next to the big blank uh, plane retaining wall they had there. So HDR and DPS got together with the folks at UNM and came up with a design that you see now that I think it looks fantastic. It, uh, it gives a nice, you know, entrance, welcoming entrance to the university. Uh, looks great as you come up the hill uh, and I think everything's coming together very well so once again thank you for having us out here thank you uh, to the great team that we've put together on this one so looking forward to getting this thing finished up and just keep moving forward thanks
Well, one last person I want to recognize from the city of Albuquerque. We also, uh, Dana's done a great job on the design side and the community commitment, but we also have to have some construction oversight to make sure the taxpayers are getting what they're, what we're paying Bradbury for. So uh, Paula dodds Quan here in the orange dress, she is part of our team from municipal development. She's a special projects manager out of our construction group. So thank you for all of your oversight and making sure the barricades stay up and in the right spot. Last two points I want to make before we, we get to the tree planting ceremony is, is one is commitment honored. We, when we came out and, and there was thought to be a level of service loss at these intersections because we're losing a, losing a lane for ART, these are the type of the intersection improvements that, are, that we implemented to make sure the level of service of these interchanges and intersections stay up to, up to, up to our, our current or not better level of service. So by adding this right turn lane and UNM allowing us to use their property, that was the great partnership that led to gr the great commitment from the city to our citizens that we're following through with today. So that's, we're planting trees as part of this project and that's important and, and level of service of the intersection is staying at or better in level of service than before ART. So those are the last two points I wanted to finish with. And I think with that, we're ready to plant a tree unless anybody else wants to. Oh, and uh, Mayor wants me to remind everybody. So we, we the, the contractor's doing a wonderful job. We are, we are just about one third of the project complete now. So there is, there, there is hope. And the, uh, of completion, the contractor's doing a wonderful job. As you can see, the, the, the uh, BRT stations are going in, the ART stations are going in. Um, we have 19 of those, and those are almost all, all the foundations of those are almost all poured. We've got the lanes, the colored lanes are almost all in now. We're starting to work on those sidewalks and working with, uh, with businesses. All the utilities for uh, public, for PNM are already been relocated, so it's been a great partnership with them. And we're working with Water Utility Authority to finish up a, last, a couple last of their uh, tie-ins that they need to do. So. Uh, we are we're on schedule. We're about a third of the way through and we're excited for completion by the end of this year.